Welcome to the Get Over Yourself podcast. This is author and athlete Brad Kearns discovering ways to be healthy, fit, and happy in hectic, high-stress modern life. So let's slow down and take a deep breath, take a cold plunge, and expertly balance that competitive intensity with an appreciation of the journey. That's the theme of the show. Here we go. Let us give thanks to the show sponsors. These are great products and services. Check them out. It's so difficult to make the cut. Almostheaven.com for beautiful compact home use sauna kits. Ancestralsupplements.com for grass-fed organ meats in a capsule. Easy. DNAfit.com. Genetic testing delivering comprehensive diet and exercise recommendations. WildIdea.com. Grass-fed, sustainable buffalo, beyond organic. And the Primal Blueprint online multimedia mastery courses. I'm your host. Learn more at the links on my homepage, bradkearns.com. I also have a new button called Shopping with Brad for other cool stuff at bradkearns.com. And here we go with the show. Of course you have to work at whatever you're doing. You have to have high standards for your work. But you also have to realize that there's a lot of stuff that you can make too big of a fuss over. And when you stop that, it doesn't mean you don't care. But when you stop beating yourself or beating someone else up over it, when you stop ruminating about it, you're free. And you've got to set yourself free. There's stimuli that you can't even relate to, but you perceive them. And lots of studies show that being around large bodies of water have a calming effect on the central nervous system. So if you have a workplace with 100 workers, half of the work is done by 10 workers. This is mind blowing. I'm not a uh, participant in the bureaucratic workplace, so I have no uh, good reference point here. I floated this to a few people that I know that work in large organizations and they're like, oh yeah, absolutely. I barely got the sentence out of my mouth and they're like, for sure, for sure that's true. <laughs> oh, that's brutal, man. Get off your dead ass if you're not one of those 10 people and join the, join the fun. These people are probably living the most healthy, vibrant lives of uh, all the people in the, in the 100 person workplace. Okay, if you're ready to change your life, please check out the Primal Blueprint Mastery Courses, of which I am the host. The exercise was to bring our books to life with a comprehensive online multimedia educational experience. We have the Primal Blueprint 21-Day Transformation, so you can go primal, ditch grains and sugars, learn what primal living is all about. We have the Keto Reset Mastery Course, If you've built up some good momentum and now you're ready to try this keto thing and do it right once and for all and be guided step by step throughout the content in the entire book, The Keto Reset Diet, through video. If you're too lazy to read, just watch me talk you through the whole thing. We also have the Primal Endurance Mastery Course, which is the world's most comprehensive library of interviews with experts, great athletes, and covering the entire content of the Primal Endurance book an absolute must-have for an endurance athlete who's trying to do it right instead of get broken down and burnt out. And many other ones, we have a stand-up desk experience called Don't Just Sit There with Katie Bowman. We have a paleo cooking boot camp where you can cook for a couple hours on the weekend and have meals for your family all throughout the week. Great courses. Click the links at bradkearns.com and learn more. Welcome to The Breather Show. Insights inspired by Dr. Art Devaney, one of the true forefathers of the ancestral health movement, good friend of Mark Sisson's going way back. And oh my gosh, he started blogging 2005, 2006 and was a great inspiration uh, to Mark and others uh, at the initiation of the primal paleo movement with his insights about patterning our diet and especially our exercise patterns after our ancestors. So the guy is retired now. He's, what, 82 years old, uh, not so much in the public eye, not cranking the podcast circuit or the paleo lecture circuit, but 
He has delivered some of the most profound life advice I've ever heard. If you go back and dig into his old podcasts, he has a book called The New Evolution Diet uh, that came out several years ago. Uh, now he's on Facebook is where he does his public uh, communication, but he used to have a wonderful blog. I think he had to pay to sub subscribe to it, and it was well worth it uh, talking about these intuitive, simple, ancestral-based insights that form the foundation for this fabulous movement. Uh, we did hear him recently on a 2017 podcast interview on the Align podcast with Aaron Alexander. That was a great show, so go look that one up. I also found one from over 10 years ago uh, where he was talking about both economic theory, as he is a retired professor of economics, specializing in Hollywood economics. So he wrote a book a long time ago uh, about uh, how to determine if a Hollywood movie will make money or not. And I think some of his uh, takeaway insights were that uh, the marketplace is very chaotic. A lot of it happens by word of mouth, and it's quite unpredictable. So good luck, Hollywood. Keep focusing on quality. Like Jerry Seinfeld says, work on your act and quit trying to turn it into uh, metrics with uh, analytics instead of uh, keeping it as an art. All right. So, uh, yeah, go look for him on the Align podcast, and I'm going to give you some great tidbits and insights. I've been doing a lot of research on the subject of longevity uh, as Mark Sisson and I are working on a grand comprehensive project for a new book. And it's become sort of a hot topic these days. I know there's some other folks uh, working on uh, longevity books and projects. I guess we've already been told enough about uh, the mechanics of what to do, what to eat, how to exercise, how to sleep. And so now we want to turn our attention to uh, optimizing uh, what is coined, the term coined is health span rather than just lifespan. Right now we're doing pretty good extending lifespan through pharmaceuticals and keeping these poor folks alive on machines and uh, drug regimens where they're barely functional, but they can squeeze out uh, five more, 10 more years than they might have decades ago. And so we can proudly tout these uh, heightened life expectancies in modern times. Uh, but again, just recently, uh, some very disturbing news in the past few years is that today's younger generations, like my children, have a lower life expectancy than I do for the first time in the history of humanity. Very disturbing. Anyone who's a parent, you want to reflect on that? Man, that's a disaster, especially because we have all this technological advancement and exchange of information over the internet where we're dialed in. We know exactly what to do to how to live a long, healthy, happy life, but we just don't seem to be doing a great job of, for example, disengaging for technology, from technology or staying away from crappy food because it's stuck in our face. The temptations are everywhere, the commercials, the billboards, the social acceptance of eating processed food. Yeah, a little disturbing. Anyway, so back to Art Devaney. Um, here's a nice quote. He's just talking about going for it in life. And he says, quote, most things don't matter that much. But when you see an opportunity for a mentor, a business partner, a life partner, you have to go for it. These are the moments these are the things that will change your life. It's not the incremental, not the steady drip, drip, drip. Very interesting. Think back into your own life and consider those times where you had life-changing events or circumstances. Many times it did not come in that drip, drip, drip fashion. And this is an insight that's uh, borrowing from his uh, economics background where we had these chaotic, explosive events, both in the marketplace, where you have a, a brand that took off, Lululemon, you have to get their clothes, they're awesome, they're incredible. Uh, were they here five, seven, 10 years ago? No, but Reebok was, and a whole bunch of other people that have just dripped along, but haven't seen that explosive growth to go from zero to 60 in two seconds. Yeah, not the steady drip, drip, drip. Uh, maybe the drip, drip, drip is overrated because we always talk about keep plugging away and insights like that. Uh, I just uh, listened to a fantastic uh, book that's actually a little bit old, uh, Seth Godin's book called The Dip. And he's talking about the importance of quitting shit that doesn't feel aligned with the highest expression of your talents or is just not the right uh, direction for you. 
So get good at quitting early and quitting often. And in return, you get to focus on becoming what Godin says, try to focus on being the best in the world at something. And in this context, world means your own personal world. So trying to be uh, the top student in your class, uh, the best uh, plumber in town on Yelp, whatever the context is, the greatest rewards come from people who make it through uh, intense competitive circumstances. That's what he calls the dip and then emerge because they're called by the highest expression of their talents and their passions to pursue this goal no matter what. And where do we see the most dramatic example of the payoff is in, uh, let's say, the uh, entertainment arts, uh, athletics uh, entertainers where they're making millions and zillions of dollars because they're the very best and they've made it through this dip and they were just compelled to continue going, 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 and then have these explosive events such as getting drafted by uh, the professional leagues or getting a hit song after you've been plugging away uh, for five, 10 years, whatever. Okay. So that's a great lesson for all of us. Go for it when those moments come up in life, when you have that intuitive sense that it's time to take action. Dang, I got to admit, recently I went for it, proposing to Mia Moore, one of our favorite podcast guests, and uh, I was inspired by my interview with John Gray, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, America's all-time best-selling relationship author. We had a wonderful show, a great interview, uh, looking on the video at Skype, and uh, the guy was going off with his rapid fire insights. And uh, then he paused and broke down a bit because he was reflecting on uh, the tragic loss of his wife a year ago. He was married for many, many years. His wife was a featured element of his books and his educational material, constant reference, wonderful partnership. And that's pretty heavy, man. And then he's going on in his show describing all the attributes of an optimal relationship partner and a winning partnership. And I keep thinking he's describing me and more in every way. So what am I waiting for, man? <laughs> Why the drip, drip, drip? Why are you going to extend it out? And so on the spur of a moment, hey, man, time to propose. It's as good a day as any other one. So there we were at baggage claim at Burbank Airport, going for it in life getting the big payoff. <laughs> okay, back to Art Devaney. Oh, I actually uh, uh, butchered his quote or cut in on his quote. So he talks about uh, those are the things that change your life, not the incremental drip, drip, drip. Continuing the quote, of course you have to work at whatever you're doing. You have to have high standards for your work, but you also have to realize that there's a lot of stuff that you can make too big of a fuss over. And when you stop that, it doesn't mean you don't care, but when you stop beating yourself or beating someone else up over it, when you stop ruminating about it, you're free. And you got to set yourself free. Set yourself free from your old mistakes and things that happened to you. Even set yourself free from people, thoughts, foods, and habits that bring you down. That's when you're free. That's when you can start anew. You can renew every day. Granted, you can't forget the past. Then you wouldn't have any memories, but you have this potential to renew every day. End quote. Whew. Okay. Uh, I told you he was an economics professor specializing in the complex aspects of how you can make money with Hollywood movies and emphasizing the random explosive life-changing events that apply in all areas of life. So what about setting yourself free right now if whatever stuff is bringing you down? If it's a crappy job or a toxic relationship or maybe some dietary habits that you've been talking about changing for the last six months, 12 months, 18 months, go for it. Take explosive action. Try something new. Try something different. Say WTF and move along. Here's another choice quote. Quote. And it's kind of uh, relating to this explosive event concept. He says, and I think this is an insight that's a, a law or a principle, probably has a name, I forgot. But he, uh, Devaney relates that in any organization, any big uh, bureaucratic organization, half the work is done by the square root of the total number of workers. So if you have a workplace 
with 100 workers, half of the work is done by 10 workers. This is mind-blowing. I am not a a participant in the bureaucratic workplace, so I have no uh, good reference point here. I floated this to a few people that I know that work in large organizations, and they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I barely got the sentence out of my mouth. And they're like, for sure, for sure, that's true. (laughs) Oh, that's brutal, man. Get off your dead ass if you're not one of those 10 people and join the the fun. These people are probably living the most healthy, vibrant lives of uh, all the people in the the 100-person workplace. I don't know, maybe some of them, like, uh, what was the great movie, Office Space, where those guys were angling it very well. So they were, uh, uh, you know, partying and relaxing at work and doing other fun stuff with their lives, but just making it through, surviving, making themselves look good. I don't know, man. I'd rather be one of those hard workers getting stuff done, having the day go by quickly. Okay. Uh, I mentioned this on another show, worth repeating, Art Devaney's recommendation to deal with depression. A question was posed to him accordingly, and he said, boom, starve and exercise. Continuing, quote, the starvation part of it is to eat up some of those dysfunctional synapses, right? Because we know the insights about autophagy, how autophagy is optimized. That's the natural cellular detoxification process that occurs when you starve your cells of their usual steady stream of energy. So the starvation part of it is to eat up some of those dysfunctional synapses, cleaning up damaged cellular material through fasting. And then back to Devaney's quote, my saying is, For every damaged molecule, there's a damaged thought. Those are the injured neurons inside the brain. And you just need to get rid of the dysfunctional molecules that are causing those neurons to malfunction. Then heal the brain with neurotropic factors. That's like environmental stimulus, things like exercise. He says, quote, be outside. Think new thoughts, empowering new thoughts. Engage in new patterns of behavior. When my first wife was declining from a host of other things, I'd take her walking as much as I could. I would tell her bad jokes, change her surroundings, the typical things people have to do. Being outside is enormously effective. Remember, this is one of the leading ancestral health experts ever on the planet. There's stimuli that you can't even relate to, but you perceive them. And lots of studies show that being around large bodies of water have a calming effect on the central nervous system. This is uh, me talking now, jumping into his quote. There's also a concept in Japan called forest bathing, where they actually give medical examinations inside a, a park with lush foliage, and they see people with lower stress hormone values, lower blood pressure, because they're amidst nature. We don't even know the exact mechanisms on which these Uh, insights occur or these phenomenons occur. But when we're around large bodies of water, it has a calming effect on the central nervous system. One uh, uh, speculation is that there's a lack of intense stimulus, right? You're gazing out into the ocean, so your brain relaxes, as opposed to when you're on 7th Avenue and 54th Street, and you're trying to find Times Square in New York City, and there's noise pollution, light pollution, (laughs) especially at night, man. Times Square's cool, but give me like five minutes there, and then uh, take me away quickly so that I don't get blasted with all that light in the dark. Very disruptive and disturbing. No offense, Times Square. Back to the Devaney quote. Uh, So he's talking about his first wife who was declining, taking her outside, telling her jokes, giving her different stimulation. Uh, Being outside is enormously effective. There's stimuli you can't even relate to, but you perceive them. Your unconscious brain is what's going to heal you first. You can also find Art Devaney talking to Tim Ferriss on Tim Ferriss Show. Uh, personally, when you think about starve and exercise, I'm taking that to heart with my intuitive approach to keto. So some days I am engaged in uh, starvation mode. I'll wait until I experience true sensations of hunger, until my stomach starts ghrelin, which is the activation of the prominent hunger hormone ghrelin. And I'll go until 12, 
one, two, sometimes 345 before I have any food. Maybe I've done some moderate exercise, uh, not necessarily like intense sprinting and then fasting that long, but maybe I've done no exercise and I'm just having a day of starvation. And then other days, man, banging some pretty good workouts, maybe not uh, pairing that with starvation, but getting both of those in in an intuitive manner. Uh, another thing that Devaney does that's really cool is these brief uh, bursts of high intensity exercise. So he'll do uh, 15 minutes a day of lifting heavy weights and sending that renewal signal, that's his term, renewal signal to his genes and cells throughout his body uh, saying that, hey man, I know I'm 82, but I still want to stay strong. So I'm going to go buy uh, some weights. I have a nice uh, hex bar in my backyard and I'd go and do a set here and a set there throughout the day honoring this insight of just sending those renewal signals uh, to the cells throughout the body. Oh, finally, <laughs> one of the great Devaney quotes, don't jog it's too dangerous. What the heck is he talking about there, man? And I think he's alluding to the high risk of health disruption with chronic cardio. So maybe jogging uh, would be better replaced by running and doing uh, in-between workouts. Because if you're in good shape and you jog, that's a different stimulus than someone who's in moderate shape and goes out there and jogs. And I see these people on the roads all the time and on treadmills with their red faces looking like they're suffering. And if you compare that to uh, what the Olympic marathon runners are doing, those people are literally working harder. They're working at a more elevated heart rate than the Olympic marathon runner who's out there floating along, looking impressive if they pass by on the trail, but they're working in a less stressful manner than the average jogger. So when Devaney says, don't jog, it's too dangerous. He's talking to most people who are out there jogging. And oh, let me tell you, in uh, uh, November, December, a little bit of January, uh, 2018, 2019, I got super excited about speed golf and simulating the tournament circumstances by going out there and playing a full round at a good tempo running speed. And I did it too frequently. And I plunged right back into the overtraining burnout symptoms that I'm so familiar with from decades ago when I was pushing my body out there on the professional triathlon circuit very disturbing uh, chain of events where I saw my health decline due to my passion for what seems like a, uh, a, a reasonable thing to do and, and staying fit and being outdoors and doing all that great stuff, challenging myself with a competitive goal, but so easy to overdo it when you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. So had to tone that down in the process, inventing a new sport called speed golf in a cart. Hey, yeah, for only six bucks more, I grab a cart and I'm still playing really fast because I want to simulate tournament conditions where I'm hitting the ball quickly. So instead of these long uh, uh, tempo runs between shots, you know, 300 yards here, just kidding, 240 yards here, 260 yards here, another 180 yards to the green. Uh, now I'm just doing wind sprints. So I drive the cart up, uh, jump out of the cart, maybe run from the path over to the shot, back to the cart ram it up to the green, run over, putt the putt, run back to the cart. So I get a nice workout of wind sprints, nothing too long, nothing too strenuous, play the golf course and go home and uh, continue on with my life without suffering from this burnout effects of jogging due to it being so dangerous. So there's what amounts to a wonderful plug for an ancestral inspired exercise program where you're doing plenty of low level movement and making sure it is at the aerobic zone and not above the often referenced 180 minus your age formula. That's Phil Maffetone's formula to quantify your maximum aerobic limit. I'm 54, 180 minus 54 is 126, right? I think so. And so I do not want to exceed that number if I'm doing a jog or doing a, uh, a fast walk or whatever it takes to get you up to that limit. You want to have your cardiovascular sessions below that so they're not stressful and they don't lead to uh, damage, dysfunction, breakdown, burnout, illness, and injury. You want that renewal signal coming when you're just walking and hiking and taking it easy and not stressing yourself. And then package with that, sending that renewal signal to your genes through brief high-intensity sessions that Devaney's been talking about now for, what's that, 13 years ago, he's been banging this drum. 
So dig up his old material on the Align podcast or the Tim Ferriss podcast. Get some inspiration. And thanks for listening to The Breather Show. Thank you for listening to the show. We would love your feedback at getoveryourselfpodcast at gmail.com. And we would also love if you could leave a rating and a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. I know it's a hassle. You have to go to desktop iTunes, click on the tab that says ratings and reviews, and then click to rate the show anywhere from five to five stars. And it really helps spread the word so more people can find the show and get over themselves, because they need to. Thanks for doing it. I want to enthusiastically recommend DNA Fit, cutting-edge genetic testing to deliver a personal profile that will guide your fitness and nutrition goals. So simple, you spit in a tube, mail it off, and soon you get by email this super cool infographic where it delivers all these important insights and elements of your genetic profile at a glance. How you metabolize carbs, caffeine, vitamin D, lactose, and much more. My exercise profile was mind-blowing because it revealed my genetic muscular makeup to be 54% power strength and only 46% endurance. As a lifelong endurance athlete, I've been banging my head against the wall, training in a manner that was in conflict with my genes. Don't wait 20 years making mistakes like I did. Find out what diet and exercise patterns are most aligned with your genetics at dnafit.com. This stuff used to be super expensive. It was a few hundred dollars. Now it's pennies. Not really, but it's a great deal. And you get 30% off if you just put in the code. G O Y 30. Check out everything at dnafit.com.